Ukraine's destruction of two arsenals of the main missile and artillery directorate of the Russian Defense Ministry has already begun to have an impact on the front. Russian troops in the Kursk region are facing a shortage of ammunition. This was recently reported by the Russian Z resource Northern Channel associated with the Russian armed forces. In principle, this was to be expected. After the flights to ammunition depots in the Tver region, the units in the Sudza direction began to feel a shortage of ammunition, the Russian resource wrote. He specified that there is a shortage of 122mm caliber artillery shells, including for the D-30 howitzers and even 5.45mm caliber cartridges. The latter, we recall, are used for firing from the Kalashnikov assault rifle. The company commanders are already starting to get a little nervous about this. So far, nothing super critical, wrote Z Channel. He clarified that at the moment, the command is trying to resolve the issue by redirecting some of the shells from other directions. It is noteworthy that, according to the resource, the GRAU arsenal supplied shells to Russian troops operating not only in Kursk, but also in the Kharkov regions. On September the 18th, Ukraine launched a successful strike on a main missile and artillery directorate arsenal in the Tver region. The detonation was so powerful that seismologists recorded quite serious earthquakes at the site. The warehouses were completely destroyed. A few days later, another main missile and artillery directorate arsenal was successfully struck a couple dozen kilometers from the previous one. Russia lost a colossal stockpile of ammunition that it had planned to use in an aggression against Ukraine in the next couple of months. Recently, another arsenal of the main missile and artillery directorate of the Russian Defense Ministry in Volgograd region came under attack. In the Volgograd region, a large arsenal of the Russian army Kotluban was attacked. Journalist Alexander Nevzorov reported on Telegram that the strike could have destroyed, among other things, an Iranian FAF-36 missile launcher, as well as a large quantity of ammunition. There was a detonation of 45 tons of ammunition. Such a detonation is equivalent to a tactical nuclear explosion. 90% of the warehouses were destroyed, data from our verified sources SBU, he wrote. The armed forces of Ukraine are assessing threats to the situation in Volodar and considering two scenarios. Army General of Ukraine, former head of the Foreign Intelligence Service, Mykola Malamuz, told on Espresso TV channel. Firstly, we are guided by the fact that Volodar is a really important logistics and defense center, which is of tactical importance for our prospects. This applies to both a possible enemy offensive in the direction of Donbass and the maintenance of a logistics route to supply the Donetsk and Zaporizhia groups. This is an alternative route to the Crimean one in case the Crimean bridge and ferry crossings are destroyed. It may be one of the alternatives, along with the one that goes from Mariupol to Tokmak, that is, directly through Zaporizhia region. That is why the enemy is aiming to capture this center in order to flank Pokrovsk and then closing our grouping in Volodar and a number of other military units to advance across Donetsk region. But we have information about his strategy. It is clear that Russia is now trying to surround our 72nd Brigade and a number of units in Volodar, he said. According to him, the Ukrainian armed forces have fortified positions and heights in this area which give them advantages, but the enemy has a numerical and firepower advantage. This is an extremely difficult situation, so the enemy is gradually advancing in terms of encircling Volodar. But as for the future, we are assessing these threats and considering two scenarios. The first and main one which is being considered by the command is to strike from the flanks of the enemy coming in from different sides of Volodar. This can very effectively devalue its prospects. This is the format that will allow the armed forces to block the enemy's capabilities in encircling Volodar, Malamuz said. The second scenario is the withdrawal of the Russian armed forces from Volodar itself. If it is not possible to group a sufficient number of firepower and forces, the general said. This is an extreme option, which involves holding positions, destroying enemy reserves and continuing defensive positions in new defense sectors behind Volodar. These are engineering fortifications that will provide protection in new positions for the reinforced units and those that will leave the besieged Volodar. As long as we see that Volodar is standing, we are ready for the operation. 
The command does not disclose the essence of the operation and this is right. Perhaps there will be an unexpected decision for the enemy in this sector. We hope that we will hold our positions and be able to counter-attack the advancing enemy forces, he concluded. The West has received evidence that China is supplying Russia with weapons for the war in Ukraine. This is reported by the Times, citing a Western official. It is noted that a new report received by the Allies indicates that a Chinese company is sending Russia specially designed military drones for testing in Ukraine. The Western official said the deal was concluded last year. He did not name the Chinese company, but added that there is now clear evidence that Chinese companies are supplying Russia with lethal weapons for use in Ukraine. While the Chinese government may not admit it, it will be hard for it to hide its growing support. NATO responded to the information stating that it causes deep concern and allies are consulting on this issue. China has been a decisive factor in Russia's war in Ukraine, providing dual-use technology to support Russia's defense industry. The Chinese government has a responsibility to ensure that its companies do not provide lethal assistance to Russia. China cannot continue to fuel the largest conflict in Europe since World War II without affecting its interests and reputation, the alliance said. Recall that Reuters recently reported that Russia has launched a weapons program in China to develop and produce long-range attack drones for use in the war against Ukraine. It was noted that IEMZ Kupol, a subsidiary of the Russian state arms company Almaz Ante developed and conducted flight tests of a new model of a drone called Harpier 3 in China and has allegedly already set up large-scale production at a Chinese plant. This drone can fly about 2,000 kilometers with a payload of 50 kilograms. According to invoices, seven Chinese-made drone models, including two Harpier 3s, have already been delivered to Russia for further testing with Chinese experts. Earlier, it was reported that Russia was purchasing hundreds of Chinese all-terrain vehicles for the war in Ukraine. As noted by the Ukrainian armed forces, the Russians are using these small, maneuverable vehicles to deliver personnel through minefields to the battlefield. It also recently became known that Russian occupiers have begun using Chinese ZFB-05 armored vehicles in the war in Ukraine.